I think what I have to talk about today is maybe a bit different from uh, many other speeches. So I really want to shed some light on what we at Maximum believe is very important when you build a company, uh, especially uh, a longevity company. Um, I plan to uh, have a quick introduction to what Maximum is doing uh, so that you can put it in a context uh, when I later talk about the, in my eyes, 10 golden fast track rules when you build a company. As you see here, and as, as you heard already, uh, I'm an entrepreneur from, from my heart. I, I love building companies and, and, and that's, I think, what I'm, what I'm good at. Um, I like to look into innovation. Uh, so in 2009, we started uh, building a company in the field of uh, um, renewable energy, fighting climate change. Uh, in 2016, we started to look into blockchain. That's a company, Crypto Finance Group, which we were able to exit uh, to Deutsche Börse, so the German stock market. Um, and then also Singularity Group, which is a fund focused on exponential technology leaders. So I think this is dear to me, you know, looking at what is happening uh, in, in technology, what is innovative and, and how can you build businesses out of that. Now, in 2016, I have heard the first time about longevity. So I, I bet many of you are much deeper and much longer uh, into that topic and industry. Nevertheless, I got fascinated and decided that for the next 10 years, at least, uh, I want to focus on longevity and build companies there. And so that's what we do at Maximon. We are a longevity company builder, meaning we start up companies from scratch. Um, we are not a venture capitalist, uh, but we really help building companies together with entrepreneurs. If we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. What is longevity for us? I mean, there is many definitions out there. We focus on the health span. For us, it's not right now about eternal life. This might be nice, but at the end of the day right now, I believe for us, it's important that people can live healthy and happy until they die, or as I have heard recently, uh, die as young, as late as possible. Uh, if you have the next slide, please. Now, what is a company builder? We see it as a, as a platform. It, it's a platform which allows entrepreneurs to focus on what they really do. And we keep the back free for them. They can focus on the product. They can reduce their time to market. Um, they don't have to take care of fundraising and so on. That's that's very important aspect. And we will see on the next slide, please, uh, what it is in detail. Uh, what we do is we, we bring the team together. Uh, so it, it's a bit like when you form... Uh, a music a group, a band or something like that. You need to bring the right people together. Um, we help them structure the firm, uh, tax efficient in Switzerland, of course. We provide capital, um, normally between five and 10 million per company, so significant amounts. And this should last for, let's say, until a Series A financing round where we would introduce, well, invite then other investors. This Series A should be a double digit financing round at least then yeah so we, we plan to be very actively engaged in building this company together with the team for at least about well, two three years maybe four years before we really invite them also other investors in the company we also create the ecosystem um, so for us it's important that the companies we are building work closely together uh, and as you can imagine there's a lot of spillover effects uh, when you talk about the longevity science but also when you talk about what business you can do if you can go to the next slide, please. We have a focus in longevity, of course. Now, within that focus, there is two areas of interest. And one is uh, promoting longevity and the extension of the health and lifespan. Uh, so that would, for example, be our first company, Avea. Avea is a, a supplement company uh, where we produce um, uh, longevity supplements. Uh, however, with strictly uh, science and evidence-based uh, focus. We work closely together with ETH, that's the Swiss Techno uh, Technical University here in, in Zurich. Uh, on the other side, we look at products which are needed once we have a healthier, much more agile senior society. And I think we are already moving there. I mean, when, when you look, uh, you have people who are 80, they don't want to be pensioned. They don't want to go on cruise ships only. They are active yeah, and they can contribute and this will increase. So we must look at what can we provide as services and products for this much more active aging society. And the examples for that could be co-living, uh, you know, for, for healthy and active seniors who ne not necessarily want to live in their house on, in the countryside once their children are out. Or it could be fashion labels for, you know, beautiful 75-year-old ladies, influencers together with that. In China, a startup is massively successful in that. So we really look at, at, at it from the whole spectrum and we invite 
scientists and entrepreneurs who have great ideas to, to come to us, join us. Uh, we will uh, help them to you know, substantiate their business idea, to, to validate it, to see what is possible. And if it's possible, we are very happy to you know, contribute and, and help them building it. If we can go to the next slide, please. Now, how do we do that? Um, you have always 100% when you start up a company. And now I have started up companies. And when I started my first company, I spent pretty much 50% of my time for the first three years running around getting money, fundraising. Yeah, you need to pay your salaries. And with this, you basically do not focus on what you should do. You don't focus on your product, but you focus on raising money. Now, this burden is taken away uh, because Maximum, as I said before, is financing these startup companies up to Series A. Um, we also help structuring you know, the company and everything, ideation and so on. And for this, we get 25% sweat equity. We will not get any transfer payments. We don't have any money flow from the startup to Maximum. It's only that Maximum invests and get 25% in sweat equity. We have a fund. That's the Longevity Co-Investment Fund. Longevity Co-Investment Fund with its 60 millions invests in those startups, as I said, uh, in average above 5 million uh, to bring the company to uh, Series A. And then, of course, the team gets 50%. Now, the founder team here has one big advantage. They are much faster with the product in the market because they fully focus on their product. Yeah? And secondly, they will not be diluted up to a Series A. So we believe that this idea and this structure is, is creating a good win-win because when you look around, normally when you start up your company, uh, over several financing rounds, you're down to at least 50% when you get a big Series A financing. And you lost a lot of time in fundraising. And I think, you know, us at, at Maximum being uh, entrepreneurs, uh, we probably also are yeah, able to help you uh, when, when it comes to what needs to be done first when building a company, focus on the crucial things. So we could go to the next slide, please. Portfolio, I mentioned Avea, the supplement company. The second one is Biolitica. Biolitica is a uh, a concierge service, you could say. It's a personalized longevity plan where we take people at the hand for quite some money, I must say. So it's directed at affluent, affluent clients first with the idea to generate data. So uh, even affluent people have a DNA and blood groups and so on. Uh, and based on that, uh, we, we basically for a whole year take them at the hand and see what works for them. And with this, we generate data and eventually we will be able to offer tailor-made longevity plans for just everybody and not a lot of money, but a little money because then we are in the, in the, in the mass market basically. So that's Biolitica. We are currently evaluating uh, various um, business ideas and plan to bring three to five startups every year out. So we are heavily looking for team members, for entrepreneurs. And this is an invitation. If you have a great idea or also if you say, hey, I'm an entrepreneur, I would really like to join a longevity company, feel free to join us. We would be very happy hearing from you. If we can go to the next slide, please. Thank you. There you see the team. Uh, Mark, you, uh, those of you who have been uh, in the show just before heard him. Uh, we have Jörg, we have Caroline, we have Ashish and myself. We are the, we are the, uh, the, the, the partners here. Um, four of us have built various companies. Ashish is a, a scientist, a bioscientist in the, in the field of aging uh, and molecular medicine. Then we have, as you can see in the middle, quite a seasoned uh, advisory board. Why is that? We really believe that you need to understand the science here. Um, and of course, on the right side, more and more founders and team members. So by the end of this year, we are heavily recruiting right now. We hope that we have another 10 faces uh, on that slide then. So the company is growing fast. By the way, we are based in Zug, Switzerland. But since what we have all learned during the uh, last one and a half years of pandemic, you can work from everywhere. We build also virtual teams. So you basically can work from anywhere. We expect everybody to check in at least one week with the team, no matter where that is. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to get the, to get, uh, get the best people, no matter where they are. Next slide, please. Now, maybe to the even more interesting part of what do I regard as the 10 most important golden rules when it comes to be a fast track on fast track for success as an entrepreneur. And as you see here is, you know, the, the corporate treadmill, uh, you might all have heard and many people want to escape from uh, and then go and build a startup. Well, trust me, building a startup is not a walk in the park. It's also tough. Yeah? I must say, for me, it's much more fun because you learn a lot. Um, you are faster paced and you can focus on what you believe is really important. Uh, so I think it's a lot of fun building a startup, but still, it's a lot of work. Yeah? And until you're successful, it will take some years. Yeah. 
Let's go to the next slide, please. So what do I believe is most important? It's not the business idea. Uh, and it's, yeah, basically, it's not even about the product. The most important thing is a team. You, know, you need to have the right team. And that's why we take so much care about recruiting the right team members for every company we build here. What is the right team? It's not necessarily your best friends. It's not necessarily the people you studied at university with. You want to have different qualities and competences in one team. And so that's why it makes a lot of sense to bring people from different areas of science and, and business together. And it's also super important to test whether those people can work together. So uh, when we recruit people in a new team, we always also go out for lunches, we have dinners, we drink a bottle of wine, we want to find out who those people are uh, and see whether they can work together. And so far, I must say this has worked very well. Uh, next slide, please. Now, this is interesting. A lot of people um, contact us and say, hey, um, I would like to tell you about my business idea, but you need to sign an NDA. Now, if you are an investor, you just don't sign, in, uh, sign an NDA, not early on, because as an investor, you cannot do that. You have so many business ideas on your table. Uh, if you would sign an NDA with each of them, it would basically make it impossible to look at various business plans or invest in various companies. What I have learned being an entrepreneur myself is, it's super good to talk with just everybody about your idea. You will get a lot of support. You get sometimes also critical feedback, constructive feedback. You will find partners, investors, advisors, and so on. And you can be sure that nobody really will steal your business idea. Uh, I mean, you do not just distribute the data you have or so, but the business idea as such, you don't find anybody else who have the same competency as you. You don't have people with time. They don't have the you know, the, the, the money and, and so on. So very unlikely that somebody would steal, much more likely that you get a lot of support. And that's why we believe it's very important to talk about what you do. Uh, even if it's early on, maybe your idea changes three, four times, absolutely normal. But I really believe it's, it's not about being stealth, it's about communicating what you plan to do. Next slide. Now, the other thing, uh, time to market, and I have not only one slide here, because it's really important. Um, yeah, I think, especially when we talk here, uh, you know, of, of bioscience and longevity science and so on, you have to be fast. Yeah? Uh, I, I think maybe, you know, the moonshots are very difficult for an entrepreneur. Uh, maybe there, uh, if, if you follow, you know, the, the big thing, uh, which is research driven or so, um, you may be better off for a while staying at university. Yeah. Um, I believe that once you found a company, you should be able to have a certain estimation how long it takes to have a product in the market. And if, if, if it's 10 years, you will need a lot of capital. It will be rather difficult. So if you can shorten that with a certain time, you know, doing research at university and only then branching out and doing a spin-off, it makes a lot of time. Uh, next slide, please. Now, in that context as well, and this applies not only for science startups, but for any kind of startup, it really doesn't matter what the name of your company is. It also doesn't matter what your logo is. It doesn't matter what the color is and, and, and also not the style of, of, of you know, your fonts or so on. I mean, you know that Apple uh, computers, that's a fruit. Nike is a goddess. It doesn't really matter. So don't lose time here. Don't work on branding. Go fast with the business idea. Time to market. Bring your product as fast as you can to the market. That's absolutely key. Next slide, please. And then the other thing, and not everybody is agreeing with me. Um, I know of startups which won business plan after business plan. They receive coachings, especially in Switzerland. You have plenty of coachings available for just any entrepreneur. Again, you should not build a company to win business plan contests. You should build a company to bring a product to market as fast as possible. Yeah. And here, I think if you have a good business plan, if you have a good team together, you don't need the 50,000 or maybe even more Swiss francs or US dollars you can win in a business plan contest, you will find investors. And those investors can bring you further, they bring you more money and you will be much faster. So. Here, I would be skeptical. It's not bad to join a business plan contest. It's not bad to win one, but don't do five of them. Yeah? That's not what you're here for. Next slide, please. Now, that's a difficult one as well. Of course, when you build a company, it might be a bit lonely. It would be nice to do it together with a friend, to spend the long evenings in the office if you have one. Um, but 
In my eyes, you don't need a co-founder. Actually, a co-founder costs you more money than anything else in your life. Well, maybe you know, marriage it can be can be similar if it's split uh, at one time. I think there is a, a lot of uh, how shall I say similarities here. Um, you really, when you build a company and, and you do this together with a partner, you're in for a long time here. Yeah. Now, if you build a company on your own and just you know you have three four months advantage, you have the legal structure in place, you have an office address, maybe you have a company name, and maybe you have a first investor already, and then you get a co-founder in. I mean, you don't give the co-founder 50% anymore. Then we talk about 10% or something like that. Yeah? So I really believe if you have a good idea, start now and then get co-founders in. Now, it's good to have co-founders, no doubt, but the 50-50 co-foundership might be a difficult one. Maybe it's great, you know, maybe, maybe you're the top scientist and your friend is the top business guy and, and you together will drive it. Well, that might be a wonderful team, yeah? But very often it's not. And if you don't have this fantastic co-founder yet, don't wait for him, yeah? So that, that's for me a super important role here. Next one, yeah, please. Now, that, uh, no debt equity. What is debt equity? Debt equity is money, which is only money and doesn't give you any further advice or network or anything like that. Yeah? And of course, you're super happy and proud if you get you know, the, the first money, the first capital together for your company. You see that your family, your friends trust you and so on. But they might not help you further on. Yeah? So if you have the chance in getting some smart money, as, as we call it, in your company, that's really helpful later on. You should have somebody who understands your industry it also i have seen this myself it might be very very difficult if you have investors from early on and they don't understand your industry and suddenly your company is successful enough that they really take an interest and they want to help steering it that is a disaster yeah? so you want to have people who understand it who can open doors and so on if you don't have them early on it might be wise to work with grants and loans which you can repay later of course next slide rule number six hire slow fire fast. Um, very difficult. Uh, you, you bring normally people in you believe. Sometimes even it might be friends or you might get attached to them. If you have a gut feeling that it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. Uh, and then it means fire fast. Um, it, it's really about following an instinct here. Now, of course, it's difficult. And of course, you know, some people earn a second chance. But I talk here about the gut feeling. If your gut feeling is that it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And then you do not only yourself and the company a favor, but also that person, because that person eventually anyway would have to leave your company. And so, you know, it, it's much better if you have a clear table and this person can find a new job where he or she is doing great and excelling. Uh, for the company, especially if you're a startup, it's always very difficult to have, have people too long on the company. And, and, and one other point here is it's normally the worst performer which defines the performance of a team. Yeah? So you want to have top performers only. Average is not good enough when you build a startup. And that's why hire slow, be very careful who you take in, do a lot of tests, case studies, you know, maybe also some first months of, you know, just seeing whether you can work together before you do a real contract here. Um, and if you don't, fire people fast. Next slide, please. Raise more money than you need. Well, why is this? Um, in a way, it's not good because the more money you raise, the more shares you give away, the less shares you have, you have a higher dilution. However, in my experience, normally, whatever business plan you, you write, it will take double as long and it will cost double as much. Of course, that's a, a rule of thumb, so it, it might be much better in your case. But again, um, you know, if you work together with Maximum, then you don't have the problem because there is enough money for your startup. But if you, if you go on your own, normally you should raise a bit more than what you think you need yeah because you don't want to run around every four or five months getting a new round together as i said at the beginning that is taking away the attention from what it what, what you should work on the product time to market and so on so yeah i would really look for a little bit more if that's possible the next slide please all in um if you talk to investors and you tell them that you do a startup and that they should invest in, but then you tell them that you work for UBS or whatever, McKinsey or, or any other company, you know, Pfizer, whatever it is, yeah. Um, so to have some security. Well, that's not what the investor wants. The investor wants you to be in with skin, skin in the game, yeah, because then you get the money. So, and I also believe 
you know, you want to see whether your startup works or it doesn't. If it fails, it fails. And then you do something else again. I mean, you're smart, you will find a new job or you build a new company, but at least you know then fast. If you, if you go on, you know, half the flame, so to say, it just takes longer to find out whether it works. And it's much more difficult to motivate people working with you to get investors on board and so on. So as soon as you decide to build a company, go all in. Next slide. Now, that's an advice which sometimes is, is difficult to give, but uh, modesty is not necessarily what you need when you're a startup entrepreneur. Yeah? Um, you have to tell people that it's great what you're doing and, and that you solve a big problem and that you're very confident that it is working and uh, that you make great steps and so on. Uh, people don't want to hear about the difficulties you have and you will have a lot of difficulties. Whatever company you build, it doesn't work like you expected it to, uh, that it will work. So you have to improvise a lot and you have to motivate people with you, your team, you have to motivate the investors and so on. So you, you have to produce a steady stream of good news in my eyes. Now, you have heard this, you know, fake it till you make it. Well, no, don't fake it. You know, uh, that is, that is uh, uh, not something you should do. You know, stay with the facts, but be, possible, be, uh, be optimistic about them. And, you know, if you don't have a great research result as you expected it now, yeah, well, then you say, well, now at least we know what we cannot do. You know, we have excluded one option and that allows us to focus more on another one. So... Be optimistic to the outside, and, and, and then once you're successful, it, it's of course very beautiful to be more modest. Then, and now to the last rule, number ten. Next slide, please. Credibility. Um, you're a startup. Uh, people might not yet know you. Uh, maybe they also don't know yourself, even though you, you're a genius, uh, whatever. You need to get some credibility. And normally, credibility is not established by the product, or at least it will take very, very long until this happens. So. What is the best way of doing here? Get yourself an advisory board uh, or a board of directors or whatever that is. Get people associated with your company who already have a name. Now, the nice thing is many, many people, you know, uh, who have passed their 50s, who have had certain success in their field are actually very interested to help. They want to have an involvement. They want to have a, a purpose, you know, and maybe they can throw in their network, not even money here. Um, so I think name dropping here helps not only with a photo on your website, you want people who really help you. Yeah, but it definitely helps establishing credibility and makes it much, much easier to be fast with your product in the market. Um, next slide, please. Well, that's not a rule, but maybe it's an important point. I think if money is the only motivation, it's very difficult to build a company. Entrepreneurs do not necessarily get rich fast. If you're successful, this might happen. More likely it doesn't. Yeah. So join Goldman Sachs if, if you want to get a lot of money. In my eyes, being rich not necessarily means having a lot of money, but it means being able to do what you like to do. And that's definitely something you can do as an entrepreneur. Next slide, please. And finally, um, don't wait. Yeah. Uh, your opportunity costs go up like crazy. Uh, so I do not understand why you need a five years corporate career if you want to build a company, build a company. You learn much more when you build the company than when you work anywhere else. Yeah? And then, you know, you suddenly have a, a bit of a lifestyle. You have leased a nice car. You have a great apartment. You might even get a holiday house, whatever. You send your kids to private school. It makes it just much, much more difficult to be an entrepreneur again, because normally as an entrepreneur, you have an entrepreneurial salary, and that's definitely not very high. So start up as early as possible. You know, the learning curve is so steep. Even if your first startup fails, even if the second one fails, you have learned much, much more than anywhere else. And then your third one will be a success. So next slide, please. With this, I'm basically at the end here. Uh, entrepreneurship is not, you know, a fast way to uh, the, the win. It's a lot of fails. It's a lot. Uh, you just need to get up more times than you fall down here. Uh, but I believe it's great fun. I believe that longevity offers a tremendous opportunity here, so many options to build companies, and we need to do it uh, because I think we have here not only uh, a good opportunity to build companies and make money, but we have a certain duty towards society here uh, to help people getting old healthy, being happy, uh, and not suffer. So I, I think you know, this is a great connection of uh, doing well by doing good here. Um, and that's why I'm very happy to work uh, in this field.